sometimes all we want our children to do is not go through the pain that we went through. Yeah. So we try to do everything in our power to ha- for them not to do what we did. Yeah. When all that's going to happen is they're going to do it anyway and it's going to crush us. Yeah. When all we got to do is just allow life to happen. Yeah. But that be hard. It's like, this is mind blowing because we, we talk about finance religiously, but it's crazy because it's life. It's like, and it's easier said than done, but all you got to do is, and you spiritual, watch shit, we could talk about it. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Yeah. The courage to change the things I can, yeah. but the wisdom to know the difference. And a lot of these things we have no control of. Yeah. So we just got to accept it. And again, this is outside of financial literacy, but it's made me think about it because like in my mind, it's like every, every time I get on this podcast, it's like, Yo, how can we help these people not go through this? Because I don't yeah. do this. Yeah. But in reality, you probably can't. You, you can't. probably just got to allow them to go through it and don't be as resistant for them going through it because the more you try to hold them back from going through it, the more they're not going to like you. The more yeah. they're they, they going to miss your message. The yeah. more they might resent you. Yeah. And it's like, all I'm trying to do is help. Yeah. Whole time, I'm trying to help and you resent me for, for trying... That's crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. We supposed to be talking about money. But no, this but, is crazy. but what's, what's crazy is Damn. we we still talking about money mm. and we talking about business. I learned more from my life from working or from doing business than anything I've ever done. And so financial literacy opens you up to like you be so finance finances is the one thing that that connects everything it's like the dots that connect everything Mm. how you spend money and the type of person you will will determine the type of person you are Mm. type of person you are will determine how you use money when you have it Mm. if we start a business that determines the type of businessman or woman you are if we have experiences and never experience losses through adversity is how I determine the true character of a man. Mm-hmm. And so, but what's hard is, is we try to control the things that we feel we should have control over instead of surrendering to them. And I always think about, I don't care how much money I ever make in my lifetime. I will never forget the spirit, the calmness I had, when we had nothing, mm. when my car was repossessed because I was out of town on a business trip, and it's me, my wife, four, so it's six of us in a two bedroom apartment, and navigating through that space, I would wake up early uh, to catch the early bus to go downtown. I'm living in Colorado Springs, I'm living in Colorado, state that was 4% black. Mm. Right. I, I don't think nothing I've been through has just been out of design, out of out of I like out of purpose. Four percent black whole state. So I would get up early to catch the bus to get into the office early. So nobody would see me coming off the bus station. It's snowing. We went almost like I want to say 10, 11 month with no car. But in those moments, I still remember periods where we just live life we was happy we didn't have much right but we would i would sit in them storms so i can understand how to get out of it you know what i mean and i surrender to it that's why i said when you say what's the biggest uh the biggest thing i'm saying we're not conscious of where we are and because we can't control it a lot of us seek devices to escape it but the whole time is the more that you sit in that darkness the more you find out who you are and and the type of person you can be. We don't even give ourselves the chance to be all we can be because we never start to even start. Mm, mm, mm. How do we get here? This is crazy. <laughs> this is fire. I'm like, damn. Damn, this is so... I'm like, this is crazy. Yo, let me ask you this, though. Oh, I might go deeper. Pause. You married 13 years. Mm-hmm. Why you are y'all why y'all on the same page with that? Because it's easy for you to feel that way. But if your partner not feeling that way, right? In those moments, it could be hard. Right? Like why y'all mm-hmm. on the same why y'all like, did y'all at that point, did y'all think the same? Like y'all was like on the same accord with that. 
when he's struggling, no car, like we just sitting in the dark. Because sometimes you could be in a partnership and you might feel like that way and yeah. you might be calm, but your partner might think, you know, a lot, you're not really caring. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm just embracing, I can't do nothing about it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, how was it for you? Um, it definitely was a struggle. So we there were periods where we were on the same page. I think there were a lot of periods where we were on the same page. I think at the same time, though, there were frustrations of us not getting where we desired to get in our own timing. Mm. And it showed up in various ways. That's why I say we still own financial literacy. When I took a step back and like assessed arguments, upbringings, the fights we would have, then the children we would have, then the fights we would have, a lot of it boiled down to lack of finances. Mm. You know what I mean? So I heard, um, was it was it Tabitha, I think? Um, we was at a conference. I think it was the ET 360 man conference he did a couple of years ago. And so Tabitha Brown was like, you know, when married couples get into arguments and we arguing over trash, but she was like, but it's really not about the trash can. Like, it's not the trash can. You just, you just went off because I put leftovers in the trash can, but that's not what you really mad about. You mad about something else. And so as a man, I think two things is happening as a man. One is me learning how to be a man <laughs> at a young age with a wife, right? That's a different type of commitment. Mm -hmm. And so I think when it came down to it, commitment was a key thing that kept us committed because there were times where she was like, I was like, man, I'm out. I remember calling my mom I'm like, look, I ain't trying to deal with this. Like, I don't have to. I don't, I could go. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's probably for a real. Bad thing. I could walk out today. Yeah, and I'd be good. That's what we you all say. I mean? Like, I'll be, I'll be straight, straight man. Right. I'm good. Now she the one. <laughs> you feel me? Like she gonna have to, right. and that's exactly how I was. Yeah. And my mom was like, "No, nah, you married." Mm. I'm like, "Man, I'm not so, trying okay. to hear that." Yeah, I, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not trying to hear that. And then so. I could put this out there. So when, a lot of our first, let's say first early on stuff was about um, the fact that my wife didn't work. So throughout our marriage, my wife really didn't work. Every It was some periods where she got a couple jobs. Um, one was out of just like, hey, I just want to get out here and I need a break. Um, the other two were like, you know, we in a, we in a bad spot. Mm. Shout out and, to that. Yeah. She, you know, she like, we in a bad spot. So I'll, you know, do a little something and it'd be what it's, what it's going to be. But when I was growing up, I watched my mom work every day. Mm. I watched my grandma work every day. We're talking about my grandma worked in New York over 50 something years on a job, never not worked. So in my mind, I'm thinking, Everybody work. Mm. So when I'm getting married, I go off into the army. I'm going to work. I come home and it appears like you chilling. Mm -hmm. If I'm working, damn it, you working too. So we, our arguments was based off that. But check this. It wasn't until some, I'm talking about had to be at least four or five years, maybe three, four years past. We went to a therapy session and I discovered that she never wanted to work because she watched her mom work all the time mm. and her dad didn't work. And so in her mind, she's like, women ain't supposed to work or I don't want to work. I don't want to recreate what my mom been through. You know what I mean? So before that, what made me ease up off of it was I called my dad. I'm like, man, look, I'm working. She need to work. She don't want to get no job. Like what's happening? My dad told me straight up, he said, look, as a man, you the maintainer and provider of your house. He said, if your wife decides to work, um, so be it. But that shouldn't stop you from paying bills or shouldn't affect your money. 
So when he told me that, I let it go. I never had an argument about it. Then years later, I discovered why she didn't want to work. You know what I mean? So I say that because most times in marriage, I think the first few years, you're trying to, I'm trying to match her to what I've been accustomed to. Mm. She's trying to match me to what she's been accustomed to. Mm. And the whole times, the the customs of which we've been accustomed to are full of shit. Mm. Excuse my, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not backed by nothing because we both coming from broken homes. We both coming from poverty. We both coming from families with, you know, this person got kids. It's six of us over here, three of us over here. We mm. both coming from spaces of like trauma that we really don't need to bring in with us. Yo, I say when it's to come to that type of stuff, I say like, you know, this new way these things like standing on business, right? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, we always trying to stand on some business that ain't going to hold us up when we need to be held up. Yeah. Like, you standing on ego that's fragile. Yeah. Like, what business are you standing on? Nah, because you ain't going to do this. And I ain't allowing nobody to... Okay, yeah. who? Now what? Yeah. Right? And it's like, we really be standing on nothing. Yeah. I like, think about it. Paint a picture for all my homies out there. A nigga play you in the street, or or let's say somebody try to rob you, mm -hmm. right? And this is for my people. A nigga try to rob you, you got chain, jewelry, all that, right? Now I'm standing on bed. Anybody want to take nothing from me? All right, you try to fight back. Mm -hmm. Let's say I ain't even gonna go to the worst because he can shoot you and kill you, right? Let's not even go to the worst. Let's say he don't have a gun, but he stab you. I don't know. Stab, poke you out. Mm -hmm. Now you can't see. Was that worth you just giving up your jewelry? Right. No, but it's, that's why I said like, it's like we be standing on business that don't support us. Yeah. It's like what, like in, in a relationship, same way. Yeah. It's like okay, I'm gonna stand on this business, and then we break up, and it's like it, 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 it just don't make sense. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And what, I, what? And and ultimately, it's like, bro, how do we go with the current camera? Right. But at the same time, still allowing ourselves. St still being out, being true to ourselves. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I think what happened is we get, the lines get blurry. Mm -hmm. We don't know who we are truly, so we can't go with the current allowing us not to lose ourselves because we don't know who we are. Yeah. It's like, nah, I'm, I want to be me. Okay, who tell me who you are? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure you don't even know who you are yet because you ain't find it yet and that's okay. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. This is, this is crazy. We still be talking business. So let's get back to business. I, but <laughs> I, I think we still we still we still on it. I say that to say I say that though, all of, all of that because I think this is Neo's favorite line. Even though I heard it before Neo, but whatever, I'm gonna give it to Neo. <laughs> how you do one thing mm -hmm. is ultimately how you do all things. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you can stay mentally fit, time is back to business. Yeah. Mentally disciplined. In your, in any part of your life, your relationship, your business, then you can apply that same mentality to everything in your life. Yeah, because it's get hard. Yeah, with everything. Well, how, how who are you going? Who are you going to show up as in those moments of adversity? Yeah, which at at the end of the day shows your character for sure. I think. Um... I think this is probably where I'll lean more on men. I think that men, we as men need a true purpose. Mm. And sometimes in order to get to find our purpose, we might have to do work until it leads us to our purpose. Mm. So I think that when households and relationships and the things that come around us, like, because what happens is it, it's a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I think you can easily get distracted when you're not mentally focused on a certain thing in your life. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, and so how do I know that to be true? I think my life serves as an example of it, being that I feel everything I've done or did and will do, I feel like I'm always led to do it. 
or God speaks to me in a certain way. And it's like, hey, go this way. But let's just take it out of me. We could go right into Genesis. Um, notice that when God created the heavens and earth, right, in six days, he rested on the seventh. He was very detailed in what he created, when he created. Mm -hmm. And notice the creatures and creation was created before he even made man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the jobs was here before he put a man on earth to give him a job. And that's the first thing he did. When I created Adam, we have a particular job. Here's the job description. Here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. Then God said, man, I don't think it's, it's not good for a man to be alone. And he created the woman in a way that it helped Adam continue to fulfill the job he had because he had purpose and he had an anchor. So something always held them, held them close to be like, I got a, I got a extra reason why I'm doing this. And he was already given a job mm -hmm. for most men. I don't think that we keep our hands busy enough in the right way to where we could cut out distractions. Cause at the end of the day, the blurry lines that we see, they become, they are really distractions. If anything is keeping you from where you're trying to get to, it's a distraction. And you might be like, I'm not, I don't know where I'm trying to go, but if you really listen to the, to, to your inner voice on what it's telling you to do, it could be simple as let me start off with Amazon. Everything. I, I didn't come out the womb. Like, yo, we, we about to be financial literacy. I went from high school to the military. I knew I wasn't going to stay in the military because I overheard uh, a higher ranking um, person in the military. This was everybody in the military get paid on the first and the 15th. This is probably day 10. We uh, just did PT. I stayed at the barracks to shower, change all this stuff, get ready for work. I'm overhearing these two E7s, take a shower um, while I'm while I'm showering, but he's like, "Hey, man, let's go get some breakfast." This dude was like, "Man, I can't go get no breakfast till we get paid on the 15th. And I'm like, "I'm a E three, E four at the time. I know what my money be looking like. How you E seven and you can't even get breakfast today till you get paid on the 15th? It just didn't add up for me. So I'm like, "Man, I got to do twenty some years in here to get higher ranking and possibly still deal with." with financial issues like this, that's crazy, right? Which led me to be like, no, I'm not staying 20 years in here, got out, um, went went to college, working the government job, which led me to Northwestern Mutual, got fired from Northwestern Mutual, which led, led me into the, the partnership we created with my dad, and through the trauma led me to Eagle Financial Group. Mm -hmm. So the point was I stayed busy doing something. We was we was moving the needle. Might not have been moving as fast, but we just when you move that decimal at one point. I think <clears throat> that's definitely true. I think also to add on that, I think um when it specifically we talk about men, something that I I, I I uh had challenges with. I think men need to do a better job at learning balance. Cause I don't think it's a busy thing. I think it's being able to balance two things at once mm -hmm. or compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if I'm by myself, I'm single. <sighs> what? I'm going crazy. <laughs> what? Like, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm living in my purpose. Yeah. I'm lit. Yeah. The moment I add a woman to that, now I blame her for knocking me off my purpose. Mm -hmm. When really, I just don't know how to balance the two. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like men get so tunnel vision or laser focus on the goal that we have, the end goal, mm -hmm. and getting there. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to understand that that ain't just, it, life ain't just that. When mm -hmm. as men, I feel like it's easy to, to put life as just the end goal mm -hmm. because we're goal oriented, right? Like we problem solvers. It's like, mm -hmm. man, I got a vision, I'm gonna get to this vision. Mm -hmm. But when you add somebody into it, especially a woman, I've noticed just from my experience that our goals don't always be the same, especially not at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I gotta be able to learn how to 
deal with those emotions or deal with that when it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I might be like, man, I'm not trying to focus on that, but I got you. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's knocking me off my, my, that's knocking me out off my mission. When it's like, if I can learn how to balance the two, be focused, but still, but continue to be present, right? To continue to be emotionally present in the, in the where, then I think that's how we really un unlock like the third eye, if mm -hmm. that's the word for it. Because I, I think um my one of my my dad said this, he was going, he was going through some things, and I never forget. He was like, man, I went to the track. We gonna cut out, but. I remember he said he was going through some things with his wife. Mm -hmm. And so if you give me a timestamp, he's like, we're going, he was going through some things with his wife, right? And um, he's like, he went to the track and he seen a lady and he's like, hey, can I ask you a question? And at first she was like, kind of like nonchalant. Like, he was like, nah, nah, I'm married. I don't want to like talk to you about nothing like that. I just want to ask you a question. And he was like, man, what makes a woman happy? And you know, we, we thought, he thought, I thought, she was going to say, like, you know, uh, stability. And she was like, nah. Um, I think she said, like, mental, uh, like, feeling safe mentally or something like that. Something mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, it threw him off. Because he's like, huh? Like, what? And he was like, to him, it didn't make sense because men are so logical, right? But women can be emotional. Mm -hmm. And, like, sometimes the two don't mesh because mm -hmm. you can't really be logical with feelings. Like, one is the truth and like one is how you feel. Like, mm -hmm, it's subjective, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. But when she said that, it kind of, it kind of made sense to him, like, why he was clashing with his wife, because it's like, wow. Like, sometimes she just want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she just want to feel like I care, I'm there, like I'm mentally present. Mm -hmm. But as a man, it's when, when we buy ourselves and trying to tie together, I don't got time for how I feel. Mm -hmm. I gotta focus on my goal. Mm -hmm. But when you add somebody to that, you gotta learn how to adapt. Right. And I think that'd be the hardest thing for for a man. So I think that's probably one of the biggest keys. What you said, like having goals is, is definitely for sure. Like definitely stay busy. But I feel like once you get there, you gotta learn how to adapt in the moments when it ain't just you. I don't know. I, I don't know if that made sense, but I just feel No, like it do, but 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 what happens is <laughs> All right. This just got crowded. You know how we, bro, we just went we're going crazy. We're going, go ahead. Yeah. So what happens is we have to be, we have to really be particular about the partners we, we have. Mm. And I think you have to question how did y'all become partners? Mm. Because. <sighs> When most times when you meet a partner, both of y'all are at a certain point. Nine times out of 10, you might be very close together than you are apart on that same level. Mm. Right. Which which sparks the attraction. So we talking about a man who, let's say, level one. And his goal point is to get to level 10. Well, through that transition, there's growing pains that you have to go through to get there. At the same time, I don't necessarily want to call it balance. But at the same time that we get into a rhythm of something or pattern of something, right? If we're growing, like your spouse has to be willing to take that journey. Mm. That doesn't mean that you get to count he or she out of what it is that they want or not be present in the moment, but it still means that we still got to hold the goalposts, mm -hmm. right? So when a, if I was to hear a woman say, like, I want to be mentally safe, mm -hmm. right? Having that balance of the emotions will be from a logical perspective, I would just simply ask, well, what does that mean? And I don't think we do that. Mm -hmm. I think we try to understand it in our peg of knowledge of like, well, this is how I feel this is, instead of trying to empathize or sympathize or just harmonize with the other individual, especially a woman, to say, well, 
what does that really mean to you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that stuff be taken from places of watch how this ties to financial literacy. (laughs) A lot of that stuff be taken from places of like how they grew up in the environments that they were in. Mm -hmm. Somebody was raped. Somebody was molested. Somebody felt abandoned. My dad wasn't there. My brothers didn't keep me safe. Somebody should have stopped such and such from touching me. You know what I mean? Somebody should have showed me a different way of life. And for a woman to say, I want to have security. I want to have protection. I want to mentally feel safe. That suggests that you have been in environments where you wasn't able to do that. So you're seeking that. The only way we can provide it from a logical standpoint, though, is we got to make money. Mm. Why do I say that? The money changes our environment. If we if we if we get to a point where we're making. We're making certain type of income, you're automatically going to shift your family dynamic. The experiences you have will be different. The way you look at things will be different. That means the level of conversations you have will totally be different. That means that even if you live in, let's just say we making money and we still living in the hood. If I'm making money, my experiences is mentally taking me out of there. Mm. So that our environment suggests that my kids won't be in a position where they will feel that they parents wasn't there. Somebody will be intentionally trying to harm them or that they won't feel safe enough to express to their parents what happened in case they're in a position where we're not there. Environment dictates your outcome. And one of the things that in that really dictates your environment is finance. 